Generic greetings and welcome back to the cultist playthrough on Airships Conquer the Skies. Today's sacrificial offering is a nice cup of cranberry juice. So in the previous episode we managed to take over some more territory however we came across a little bit of an issue actually more of a massive issue and that is the mad scientist in roughly the centre of the map and we did try to take them out and as was clearly seen we got destroyed very very quickly by the huge death plasma ball thing that's on the top of the tower. We plan on this episode on I guess taking over some more land up here and probably ignoring that mad scientist. I would like to at least take over these three bits here. Now obviously there's a lot of fracturing going on uh, on the um, left hand side but down the south although there's a little bit of resistance here we can see that there is one major play all the way along from one side to the other so those are going to probably going to be the um, ones we have to face off eventually if we actually get there. What we also did in the previous episode is do some research. We're currently researching optics but we also went and got right to the top and got the awakening can summon a Kraken Revenant. So that's something we'll be trying out in but a moment. We also have the Secrets of Death, which is sick bears can revive the dead, and a couple of other things as well. Now, what I want to do, once I've got the uh, telescopes, I want to go ahead and probably make some sort of... Oh, you can actually uh, use the scroll wheel to zoom out and you get uh, this instead of uh, that one there. I prefer this one. Anyway, um, you can get... Where is it? It'll be... There's harpoon guns. There's uh, air dragoons and aerial hazards. I want to eventually probably go for some sort of boarding vessel. Now, we do have something like that. If we go over here and go to a build ship, we can see that we can go down to the Denver, and that is only 814 generic units of currency. It is quite fast with a decent service ceiling, enough to get to the target and then board it. However, I want to make something a bit more cultisty, but I don't know if we're going to be building that this episode. What we are going to do this episode is summon the Kraken Revenant. It is a total of 6,000 to build, and we will start it there. Now, this is a huge shipyard in Ignat, so that is quite good. That means it should build relatively quickly. You can see we are moving things over to um, different locations locations here. Our main fleet is a Barry, a Barry, and a third Barry, and uh, a couple of Prims as well. We also have down the bottom there, ah, we have an inco incoming enemy fleet, and that's from, where is that? It is over to the left here, which is going to unsee. So what I'm going to do is get this fleet over to there, and will I be able to get there in time? It is probably, yeah, that is very unlikely. What I'll do then is I will invade here instead. Now, we'll probably not be able to do anything in this location. Now, so build building and put a grand garrison in the corner there. I wonder if that will build in time. It is not going to build in time, so I will cancel that and get the money back. Um, so that's the only incoming fleet at the moment. We won't be able to intercept it, and that's one of the bad things we do need eventually to make some sort of fast reaction vessel, although to be fair, the Denver's probably the, the way to go. Anyway, so this is going to be taken over straight away and then we will take it back. So that's going to be uncontested defeat and then we're going to go over and then fight whatever is here. We don't know what that is, but we'll have a look. It is uh, interesting. We've got these, looks like to be sort of uh, hovercraft type things. They're called... Uh, the Renown, the Oppressor, and the Cormorant. And they've only got the three vessels there. And they have rifles and rifles. So lots of rifles. We're going to use the Barrys and we'll put them quite high up like so. And because we are armed with... Actually, we'll probably spread them out a little bit further just because they tend to hover up and down. And then we'll put the Prims at the back there. We should be able to take these out relatively easily. Because we've got a lot of the Grape Shot Cannons, they're obviously going to try and manoeuvre behind us. We're going to go down here and... And same thing there and we'll do that like so I'm just trying to force them so they can uh, not go anywhere obviously they do have uh, the maneuverability to eventually get around but we are focusing currently on just trying to block them in like so and eventually one of our shots is going to penetrate the uh, suspendium gas bags and that is going to fall straight out of the sky well that's what we're hoping anyway so this one is turning around oh it's a uh, turn back around as well we have got a fire there and an explosion on this uh, one right at the bottom they've lost one of the gas bags and also the top section here we've got a fire on the rear part of the middle enemy and then finally the one at the back is pretty much oh, I was going to say unscathed but it's also on fire now. I'm going to move one of these actually I'm going to move all the berries further forward we might as well 
and that will uh, allow us to concentrate our fire a little bit better. You can see the grape shots are doing very good work. Uh, this is sort of like the perfect fight for these things. There we go. You can see the damage that they are taking. They're actually quite well armoured, these things. It's uh, quite surprising. And looks like we're going to get an, an explosion on the back. They are now starting to fall out of the sky simply because of the loss of gas on the... Uh, Suspendium bags there. We're going to move this one further down. This one is currently not able to fight. That one is um, pretty much dead, and that one is also given up as well. So that is a victory for us. We will go for a brutal takeover. And we could, if we wanted to, try and invade. And I think we're going to keep this attack going because it's unlikely that we'll have much around here. We're going to send a spy to uh, Orc Wallach. Uh, Orc Wallach? Something like that. And we'll see what's here. Ah, this is not too much of a problem, I don't think. One little defense here. We're going to move these things down. And then we will start the fire. And then we'll move them over to the far right to engage that as well. Once again, with the prims, we'll do the same thing. Now, the barries are very fast. So I'm going to give them a little bit of a lead. And then you can see the prims. Even though the prims... Good grief. Uh, I didn't say ram, but... Um, well that's, you know, give them a bit of a speed advantage. There we go. And we can see the damage that these grape shot cannons cause. You can see they don't cause a great amount of um, damage on one area, but it's just a sheer amount of splash damage is absolutely immense. So we're going to move these further down like so, and then once they all have their orders, we're going to put them onto rapid fire, because currently they're on aimed fire, of all things. Uh, although we, I think we did put that on because of the because of the wasps and such. And we can see we have lost some command here, so we might have lost one of the barries. We still can control it, which is a good thing. Uh, we've taken out all of the weapons, and that should be it. And wow, the grip guns have really have done a number on that one there. It looks like we survived that, so it's going to be a brutal takeover once again. And then go over to... Uh, uh, Narlikan and take that out as well. This is all part of a territory that no longer exists, or an empire that no longer exists, technically, because they've not got a city. They can still come back from it, but I don't even know where they're... I don't know if they have a fleet. I, can, I can't see a fleet, so anyway, there you are. So, this is going to be another hopefully straight fight. Uh, they have... Interesting, they have a bit of an airstrip. We've got uh, two... Uh, two triplanes there so we'll start the fight we're going to move these in now obviously grape shot cannons absolutely fantastic at shooting at planes so we should be able to take them out with relative ease this is going to get close and then just die immediately yep and that one's got a wave off oh there we go we've got a bit of um <laughs> unscheduled yeah, that's gone. Uh, we had a little bit of an unscheduled um, meeting there. Let's uh, keep moving further forward. We've got a total of one, two, three barries plus the two prims shooting into this now. It has lost all of its planes. I say all. All two of them. And you can see there's going to be an explosion and there's also some ammo there as well. So, once again, quite a relatively easy fight. I'm going to move this a little bit further down. I'm trying to just get some other cannons in. There we are. Even if we can unshoot that bit, it doesn't really matter much. There we go. Yeah, finishing off this. That 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 one rifle there, there we go, is the only thing that was keeping that in the fight and uh, now it's actually split it in half. Yeah, extremely powerful those things when they uh, are um, in that sort of situation. So, you caught a foreign spy trying to incite the citizens of Squalor to unite against your rule and we've also got a fight down the bottom here which is... Ah, it's where we've moved our uh, bomber, and they've got their sort of wizard tower thing, which I really love the design of these things. I think they're fantastic. Um, sadly, we are going to have to kill it, so uh, we're going to do just that. We've got our slow-moving, very ponderous uh, rock tosser here that, if you're not aware, essentially it's just the really big... Um, gas bags, and then either side we've got a ladder going up and down we have a fire point a small fire point as well as a, enough enough crew to keep this thing going the main weapons in fact the only weapons on it are the uh, grenades and not grenade launches just literally like a guy holding grenades and they just fling them out of a little hatch the advantage of that is this is a sort of um, cheap person's bomber so if you don't have bombs actually I think bombs are a low level technology anyway but if you don't have uh, 
the ability to get them or you don't want to spend them, you can see what you can do instead is use these things and all they do is just lob grenades. Now this thing is not entirely accurate and it does actually look like a sort of fireworks display so it's pretty good there. I'm going to put on aim. Do I want to put on aim fire? Yes, because we've already burned through uh, probably about... <laughs> about what a fifth of our ammo so far and we haven't done very much damage at all you can see that putting on aim fire has uh, reduced the amount of shells coming down the amount of grenades but eventually it's uh, going to hit something that's quite vital probably that bit there would be quite nice so the whole thing topples over I mean one could argue that if you had bombers it would work better if we were closer all that sort of stuff but um, you know, there's something about quantity being a quality of its own, etc. We will do a brutal takeover there as well and continue on invading. And I think this time we'll go over to there. Now, I do expect this mad scientist to attack us eventually. So, uh, yeah, we'll have to see what happens there. We're going to go over to build building and put a grand garrison in because we should really have one in every place we've taken over. The Kraken is currently halfway built. That's uh, recovered from the wall. We'll double check the defences. Yes, there we go. Um... So that's moving over to there. That's there. We will have a look with the spy here. So we'll view the city and we can see they have, ah, perfect. They have two airfields. So that is their main line of defense, which is perfect for us because we have barries. So we're not really too bothered about that sort of thing. We're going to go over to uh, Squello here and just repair this thing because, quite frankly, we might as well. We'll uh, uh, use that as best we can. And now we'll tack this uh, orc lock. And I think that is a perfect setup. We're just going to go ahead and pretty much go forward obviously we are just waiting for the planes to come at us and let's see how long they take to get shut down there's one gone there's another one down and it's pretty much uh it's pretty much like our perfect scenario you can see the shots coming in there from the prims and they are doing very decent damage these planes are still dangerous, which is uh, why you see that the barriers are sort of prioritising them uh, when they go past. Like there, that's going to go past. Is that going to try and land, uh, or is it going to go for another come in? Yeah, it's going to go for another another wave there. This is the only thing causing us uh, causing us damage, so it's actually best if we took that out. So one of the options we could one of the options we could take is actually to move back over. The reason for that is they'll stop firing at the uh, targets further away there, you can see that says target not available, and now this one will shoot that player when it goes past, and there we go, that's now out, and then you go further forward there. <laughs> And that is a victory, and we'll go for a brutal take of one smart, and we now have taken out some more stuff there. Excellent. Uh, that says it's partly recovered from the wall. That is fine. Just, like, as I said, double-checking these areas to see if we've got some some uh, defence. I've got the Prims and a Denver down the bottom here. That's like our, I wouldn't say fast reaction force, but it's uh, faster than most things, so that's why we have that there. It looks like Salt Creek conquers Tuppington, so we see Tuppington, which is a lovely name, has been taken out there. Looks like uh, we're finally going to attack down this uh, last section there. Now, it depends where we want to go now. We could take out this bottom bit. Uh, the advantage with that is, I guess, taking out... Uh, Dane here and the rest of the associate ones means we're, we are just sort of going from one side of the map to the other. My gut feeling though is to probably attack from the top and work down and sort of that way because doing that will take out this other big empire here because I think it's eventually going to be myself if we survive versus uh, this fella here. Uh, the Kraken is still not built. What I'm going to do is issue an invasion on... Uh, Mether Hill there, and you can see they're actually going towards it now, so I don't know what they've got, but we'll see. This is going to be another straight fight with the Rock Toss, so we're going to put that probably just about there, that should be fine, and then we'll just put it to max speed, quite frankly. It's not going to take too long for it to get to its location. Once it's there, we've got it on aim fire, and it's just going to do what it likes to do, which apparently is absolutely annihilating three hits. Okay, either that was extremely lucky or, more likely, it was, because because of its proximity, because it was closer, it uh, managed to destroy it uh, very, very easily. We could attack here, because uh, it's only next door. We've also got a, ah, a mad scientist fleet that's coming to... Ah, that's a problem. It's coming to the Kraken. However, the Kraken will be built before it. There's research finished for the telescopes. I'm going to go for 
elite infantry will be good. Air grenadiers, 50% grenade aim and range. And plus 25 percent musket aim and fire rate. So we just get better. And we do use a lot of grenades. Hmm. Would that be the best option for it? Large suspendium chambers. That gives us more building options, I think. Uh, so we'll have to go for pressurised suspendium dust tanks and then the uh, chambers there. Okay, so we'll go for uh, high pressure suspendium first and then work uh, that way. So we are attacking one of the biggest cities here. I believe this was... Yeah, one of those again. Love the design. Um, I wish I could make things like that other than just ugly boxes like this. But then again, uh, let's move down right to there. They're armed with cannons this time, so it's something that we have to be aware of. We are trying to get there as fast as possible. The good thing about this is because it's so large, a lot of shots are sort of spread around the place and um, it's unlikely that they'll hit like a real vital point in the whole thing just collapses. Uh, speaking of collapse, you can see <laughs> the damage that this thing can do. Um, we'll go for a brutal take over there. I know I sort of scoffed when I made this thing. I was like laughing a bit at it, saying, "Oh, this is this is absolutely insane." And then it was like, "Oh, actually, this is this is really really good." Anyway, um, of money in terms of money, what I'm going to do is uh, go to defenses here. I want to probably repair this thing and then scrap that because it is pretty much useless. I will build a building. We're going to build a grand garrison there, and we'll build another one. This is obviously a. Uh, uh, this is. Uh, Orc will lock, and we want to make sure that that is uh, fairly, I wouldn't say heavily defended, but better defended. You can see the Mad Scientist creation, or the fleet, which is, I believe, like sort of uh, loads of robots with tentacle arms. They are coming towards uh, Ignat, which we certainly don't want to lose. So, yeah, let's uh, start taking over, um, pretty hounding, and then we've got giant bees, so we'll have to focus on them. Now, this is where we uh, are facing an unknown amount of enemies, and they're armed with... I have no idea what they're armed with. It looks like just a rifle, and they could be bombers, actually. They could be bombers, but we do have one defense back there, plus these ones here. Now, it is imperative that we use the height of these to get in the right position, like so. The prims can only fire straight ahead and then down. They've got no gun elevation whatsoever, but good gun depression. And then we'll start the fight there, and you can see that immediately... Ah, these are boarders! These are boarding vessels with harpoons on them! Oh, okay, that is bad. Let me uh, let me back up there, because we don't want to be boarded. That's something we cannot deal with. You can see that they are managing to grapple onto us, and they are boarding it! They are boarding the barry. No, they're actually now boarding the prim. So, that's something I did not expect. It's something that we don't often see from the AI. Uh, at least it seems that way. Let me uh, go ahead and... Good grief, we're just getting pushed uh, right far back there. Um, there's not much we can really do at this stage. They're getting pushed into reserve. And they got pushed so much to the left that they've been completely and utterly destroyed. See that there? They're actually getting crushed against that... Uh, like, as if there was a wall here on the left. I've never seen that happen. Okay, we're going to flee. We're going to flee with the two Barrys remaining, and we're going to flee back to um, uh, Orkwalock, and that means now that they're going to start going into these different areas. Now, there's not much I can really do about that. We still have the uh, fleet going there, and then the fleet there, so the Mad Scientist, we're not too worried about... Well, I say not too worried about it. I am, too, I am worried about it because I've got nothing to defeat it with uh, that's a known quantity. Um, I could... Could, I can't attack that, actually. I can't. Uh, I'm just going to keep attacking down here. That is fine. Up here, though, that is the problem, because we've lost some ships. What could we do to stop that boarding? Well, long range, not so much. Uh, high level, they were pretty high level anyway. Hmm. We could outboard them. I don't know what the solution would be. I mean, I could I could intercept. Do I want to intercept them? I don't think I do want to intercept them. I think they're just going to... I think they can happily take over this thing. Uh, let me scrap that. Actually, yeah, that's just a bit of garbage that we... Uh, well, it's, we turned it into garbage anyway. Um, let's just do this fight over here. This is our 
once again just attacking all of the extra bits. It's good to see them fighting back though, I'm uh, glad we're seeing that. This once again shouldn't be too much of a problem, the Eroctos is going to lumber its way forward and then once it gets to here we're going to say go down and then the fun begins where pretty much it is destroyed in two volleys and then we will go for a brutal takeover while we're doing that we are i think probably best on just keep attacking keep attacking keeping the pressure on don't know what's in this area but that's another big city so it's um important that we do that this is going to be taken over straight away there we go uncontested defeat and then it's going to sit there yeah that's going to sit there that's good um I was worried that uh, it would do something else. These are not in need of repair. This is still building the Grand Garrison. I'm going to say build ship, and I want to build a Denver because it is a fast ship and also good for um, boarding there. And we now have the Kraken Revenant. So let's have a refit of this and we can see what it looks like. It is a, <laughs> a mod dead squid. Yeah, uh, it is a dead squid. Uh, we can't alter it. We can't alter it, but we can see what it's like. It is a reanimated... Um, Kraken. We're going to move this thing over to the over to the fleet that's coming towards us because I want to see if this thing can defeat it. The advantage that I have is that it's 6,000 so it's quite costly which means hopefully it'll be quite good. The disadvantage is that we have no idea the, uh, the actual strength of this thing. And also we can see that we are armed with some of these tentacles. Uh, one of them's sort of snapped off at the right at the root there and then we've got one that's uh, broken as well so reanimation not entirely um great we're going to flip this and there we are and let's see what this thing can do so we're getting shot and i'm hoping that we can oh yeah we are um we can <laughs> hit it quite hard you can see the tentacles are going down to uh, belt it a couple of times in terms of maneuverability it is as you may imagine not very good it also has from the eye there you might notice that that's um, changing now and again we are managing now to hit this other one as well we got like the odd um, purple cultisty type uh magic coming out of there and you can see it is doing a fairly decent job at destroying these things now i have no idea how powerful this thing is versus say the mad scientists um like the mad scientists tower and i don't really want to waste it on that so instead what i'm going to do is send it down south here just to take out the remainder of this in the fleet um we're going to just keep attacking here. That is a fairly well-armed tower block, isn't it? This is the main city for one of the empires, and we can see that it is basically the same shape and indeed pretty much the exact same size as this thing. It does have uh, a total of six cannons forward and three rifles, but it has no flak, so that means we can go right above it like so. And then it is tower block versus tower block, and I have a feeling that we might win this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's completely and utterly chipping away at that. I mean, in terms of demolition solution systems, it is up there, isn't it? It does seem to work out quite well, although it's not working from the top. It's chipping the middle section out, although that explosion will uh, take part of that with it. And we can see that now part of the tower block is now landing on itself and we've destroyed all of one side. Uh, we're going to shift over to the other side just a little bit. You might notice I am trying to keep it away from the tower block because it is possible for us to damage ourselves. So, yeah, there we go. There's that uh, Black Citadel surrendered. So we'll do a brutal takeover and then we will keep on invading to these little areas here. There's no reason to stop with this. Oh, we also got giant bees as well, so we'll have to take that out. It's more likely going to be a... probably a Barry problem. Um, let's go to the... Um Let's have a look. Defences. We will. We might as well repair this thing because it's quite cool. And then we'll build a building. We'll build a grand garrison. We'll build a couple of those. These are armed with cannons and rifles there. So that should do that for uh, Katano. And what about these other ones? That was something to repair. I know we absolutely destroyed these last time. But if they're there, we might as well repair them. So... Continuing on with the assault over on the left, and also the Kraken is coming down, which I'm uh, glad to see was uh, quite successful. We have 
this other defense to take out. Luckily, I'm just going to put up to max speed because we know what's uh, going to happen here. Unless they hit something completely vital on this, there's uh, really very little danger. I mean, to be fair, these are the little outposts anyway, and these are... These people, these empires, have been fighting for quite some time amongst themselves, so they have spent uh, an inordinate amount of resources on uh, just sort of squabbling and such. Where now we're, we're here, we're just sort of uh, picking them all off. Uh, we'll repair that defense there. We'll put it back to uh, well, so it's not under the ground. That's generally something you don't want to have. Got the mad scientist there, giant bees there. I'm probably going to leave the mad scientist for now and this is gonna be interesting we've got our kraken here we're gonna move it right far forward uh, but we have to face off against a total of six cannons plus some rifles now the acceleration off the line is not very good but it's uh, it's fairly ponderous it's getting closer it's getting closer and that's where the attack begins so Let's see what sort of damage this does. It is randomly hitting uh, different parts of it. I am very tempted to go behind it. Um, if we do that and go behind it, we should be able to be uh, in a better sort of way. Actually, going where we are now isn't uh, too bad, is it? Because what it's doing is still attacking. But I still think that going behind is probably the way forward. So we're going to say move and then we'll flip it to there and say there. And it's going to move down and then flip and then it's going to actually back up. That's okay. So we've still got the two cannons, but we are also hitting it with uh, the tentacles, but not all of them. We've only got... Oh, there we go. It's starting to start to hit it. I don't know if we can go further back. Can we not go further back? I don't think we can. Uh, we can go further down, so we're still hitting it there. We're hitting it with all three now. So I'm going to put it to max speed because otherwise we will be here all day. I'm guessing that this creature is much better for versus fleets. Versing fleets is pretty good, I'm guessing. Also, let's try something. Press M and... Ah, okay. So its service ceiling is fairly terrible. The advantage that we have is that this is very good versus fleets that board, and we know where one of those is, because this thing can't be boarded. It doesn't have a crew, it doesn't have any need for crew, obviously it is just you know, its own creature. Um, I just don't know how much damage this thing can take. Uh, looks like we have taken out a chunk down the bottom there, and we are still only getting attacked off one cannon and three of the rifles. We don't have ammo, but they do. However, generally, static structures like this, they have a lot of ammo, so it's, it's unlikely that they'll run out before it is destroyed. Um, you can see that we are setting a couple of fires, uh, sort of ironically, I think that fire is in the, uh, is in the water tank. <laughs> well, not actually in the water, but um, you can see fires are starting to spread now, and they are putting it out. So, we are gently caressing the side of this and it is removing it. It does have very good damage when it actually hits something. It seems to take a chunk of the armour off and then blow it up if it hits it again because obviously it's random where it hits and also because of... Ah, there we go. We've took all the weapons off the front of it now so I'm going to move to there and then flip it like so. Um, okay, let's move up first because it's stuck on it and then there and oh, it's actually given up anyway. So we'll do a brutal takeover there. And I think we will probably attack up the top here. Because there's no way that I'm sending that to attack another stack structure. <laughs> it um, is far too slow for that. I say that, it, it just it's not the speed of it. It's the, um, the lack of... Um, the lack of damage... So here we go, another attack over on the right-hand side. And we should be okay. Taking a lot of territory, more territory than I would have thought that we'd uh, have taken. It is currently nighttime with snow as well. It reduces accuracy of all weapons as well. Accuracy is not what this thing is known for. It is known for absolutely destroying pretty much anything it uh, goes on top of. So let's go over to uh, Tuppington. And we're still working our way up there. We will double check this thing. We'll go to um, the defences and we will... Oh, we can't repair that. It's going to be a thousand. I'm going to scrap it then. Uh, we'll say build building and we do have... Uh, our grand garrison swing place one there build building keep doing that and then we'll probably have you know what just the two for now because i want to save some of my cash as well tubington is fully recovered from the war well it might be at the moment but it's not going to be for long so i'm attacking over here at uh 
Narlikin, and we know that there wasn't any defences there, and I don't know if they've built anything, but there's our high pressure suspendium. Let's see, we can now go for uh, the scientific suspendium mining, large suspendium chambers. So we don't know if they've built anything here, but what we do know is that they're armed with a lot of boarding vessels. So they've got no static structures, and they have the, it looks like to be uh, one, two, three, four boarding vessels, but um, obviously the advantage that we have is that we can't be boarded. The disadvantage that we have is that they still can maneuver around us uh, and land on top of us and things like that. They can also uh, use their harpoons like so to ram into us and that, as we've seen several times in this game, can be a massive problem. I'm actually going to go down here because my main focus is on this thing. This thing here is pretty much the only thing that I'm, I wouldn't say scared of because quite frankly I'm an undead kraken, well at least we are commanding an undead kraken, um, the, yeah this thing here is problematic because it has weapons on it where we can't really be dealing, we can't deal with weapons really, uh, I have ordered this to flip to there and it is not doing it, I want to say ram to there and flip because currently it's uh, not doing it, why is it not flipping? So S for, F for flip, and then is it going to flip round? There we go, it's flip round now, because we want to take off that. You can see they are latching on harpoons, but, well, we are definitely bigger and weigh a lot more. And, in fact, what's happened there is <laughs> it looks like uh, one of them has landed on top of it, and it hasn't even slowed it down. Um, in fact, I don't even think the service ceiling has been altered much at all. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. So the advantage, uh, sorry, the disadvantage with this now is that we can't, we can't destroy it. Or actually, no. If we if we ram it into the suspendium rock, <laughs> then we can. That's okay then. So we've taken out the gunboat, for the lack of a better term. We've taken out one of the borders, and the other one is down the bottom there. And we are going to go down here and do some more ramming there, like so. Because, yeah, you can see that just, it's broken on top of the, the back of this thing. And you can see they are panicking now. There's not much they can do. I'm just going to flip this round to there. I'm just going to tell it to go up and then flip. I did issue an order for flipping. Um, there we go. Just so we can attack this thing. I'm really liking the... Uh, fast order system. It's very, very quick to issue orders for this. So, there's that now out of the sky. It's dead. And the Hawk, Invincible, the Pale Mare, is, oh, they're all mobile. The Unbending, no crew quarters, and the uh, the Argus is, um, is surrendered. So, brutal takeover there. And it's going to go down here. Okay, we will... Follow it up. Ah, they're going up there, are they? Right. I'm just following them. Okay, so I think that was very successful. We have managed to stop the mad scientist. Well, we stopped his little army, a little roving army. We have taken one, two, three big cities and a multitude of the little associated towns. Down the south... There's still some resistance on the left, but there's only Cat Bridge that's remaining of that empire. They did have a. They did have a um, a big city earlier. I think it was down here. That's been taken out. I like the way there's like a, a little. <laughs> this is a northwest, northwest. We've got um, Wex. That's right. Uh, north West X. That is on uh, in the middle of the ocean there. <laughs> <laughs> supposed to be on the little island there, but that's pretty cool that it's there. Um, and then we've got some uh, bits around the top. That's why I'm not actually attacking him, because I would like for this empire to, uh, you know, fight fight against uh, these here. But as you can see, they are under attack. I think what will happen is next episode, we'll go ahead and design that thing that I mentioned about... Uh, oh, we've also got brigands up the top there. I've just realised we might have to go and take those out with something. I don't know what yet, but we'll see. Um... Yeah, I would like to take over the rest of this next episode and design that that ship that I mentioned about. Basically a boarding vessel, but it's a bit more cultisty. It's got some spikes on it and looks a bit uh, less boxy, shall we say. But we'll see how we get on. As always, hope you have enjoyed the video and the series thus far. Thanks very much for watching. Take care and generic partings.